The NFL does not like what the Kansas City Chiefs are doing. So we're going to be going through that and three other stories in today's video. So make sure to like this video. And if you want more Kansas City Chiefs news content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting that red button down below. The first story is Kansas City Chiefs has a strong message for the rest of the NFL. The Kansas City Chiefs must await the results of the Buffalo Bills-Pittsburgh Steelers game to find out who they will face in the AFC Divisional Round. But according to Chiefs defensive end Charles Omanihu, the expectations for himself and the team go far beyond their Divisional Round opponent. I didn't join to go to the Divisional Round, Omanihu told KSHB 41 News after the 26-7 win over the Miami Dolphins in the Wild Card Round. That's just what we gotta do. I joined this team to get to Vegas. Omanihu, who was a member of the San Francisco 49ers the last two seasons, made it to the NFC Championship in each of those seasons but failed to reach the Super Bowl. So he wants that to finally get over the hump this season. I want to get to the Super Bowl, Omanihu continued. So whatever I've got to do to help this team do that, I'm gonna do that. The Chiefs are 2-0 against the Dolphins this season after defeating Miami in the wild card round. Kansas City's offense had its fair share of drops and ugly penalties against Miami, but the unit put enough points on the board and didn't commit any turnovers, with the latter being a significant issue as of late. Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes completed 23 of 41 pass attempts for 262 yards and one touchdown. He also picked up an additional 41 yards on two carries. Mahomes' leading receivers were rookie wideout Rashi Rice, who caught 8 of 12 targets for 130 yards and one touchdown, and tight end Travis Kelsey, who caught 7 of 10 targets for 71 yards. Kansas City's leading rusher was running back Isaiah Pacheco. He carried the ball 23 times for 82 yards and scored one rushing touchdown. The Chiefs' defense stepped up to the plate against one of the NFL's most explosive offenses. Second-year defensive end George Karlaftis was the best performer on the stat sheet, gathering six tackles, three QB hits, 1.5 sacks, and one tackle for loss. Safety. Mike Edwards reeled in Dolphins QB Tua Tagovailoa's lone interception. For the third straight week, kicker Harrison Butker led the Chiefs in scoring by making all four of his field goal attempts and both of his point-after attempts. Speaking to the media after the game, Chiefs head coach Andy Reid shared his thoughts on the playoff victory over Miami. Thank you to the fans and the great job that they did along with the grounds crew of cleaning things up and making that field playable. They did a great job, Reid said during his post-game press conference. Hats go off to our team for the job that they did, and really for the Dolphins. I thought they came out and handled all the weather. It's a little bit different than down in Miami, and I thought both teams handled that pretty well. The Chiefs' opponent for the AFC Divisional Round will be determined by the outcome of the Bills' wildcard matchup against the Steelers on Monday evening. If the Bills beat the Steelers, then the Chiefs will play Buffalo on the road in the Divisional Round. If the Steelers beat the Bills, then Kansas City will play host to the Houston Texans in the next round of the playoffs. The day and time for Kansas City's divisional round game will be announced after the wild card round. The second story is why Chiefs Patrick Mahomes is showing his postseason greatness. Through a choppy, even confounding regular season for the defending Super Bowl champion Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes' typically gaudy statistics were muted for a variety of reasons. The most dropped passes in the NFL, drive sabotaging penalties, communications issues with his receivers, and yes, even misfires. By season's end, Mahomes had thrown for a thousand yards, plus fewer than a year ago, hurled only 27 touchdowns compared to 41 in 2022, and suffered a career-high 14 interceptions. But raw stats, glaring as they've normally been, and even such measurables as his remarkable arm, never have done justice to what ultimately defines him. That's all in the intangibles, like his uncanny sense of what's around him at all times and his voracious work ethic and poise that he underscored by staying unfazed against Miami's relentless blitzing in the AFC wildcard round game on Saturday night. And, as he displayed yet again on Saturday night, it's in his indomitable will to win and superpower for meeting the moment. True grit. With an Arctic temperature of minus 4 and wind chill of 27 below at kickoff, that was evident in the entire catalog of his effort in the 26-7 victory over Miami at Jiha Field at Arrowhead Stadium. 
In the most frigid game in Chiefs history and fourth harshest in the annals of the NFL, Mahomes completed 23 of 41 passes for 262 yards and would have been well over 300 if not for the drops that have been customary all season, but also reflected the punishing conditions. Conditions that Mahomes essentially defied. I don't think they were anticipating us throwing the ball quite as much as we did, but we were able to come out and sling it, Coach Andy Reid said. A lot of quarterbacks can't do that, but he did in that kind of weather. For that matter, fewer and fewer quarterbacks have ever done what Mahomes is doing. The two-time NFL and Super Bowl MVP entered the game with the best postseason quarterback rating in NFL history, and the victory makes the Chiefs 12-3 in playoff games he started. Only seven quarterbacks have more postseason wins attached to their names, and with two more playoff wins, he'll trail only Tom Brady and Joe Montana. At age 28, Mahomes would joke late Saturday night that he's getting old, and we'll come back to that. But the fire and desire are as intense and instrumental as they've ever been even at his advanced age. And that was embodied in one indelible play in particular, the 13-yard third quarter run that ended with a chunk of his helmet getting blasted off by Miami defender Deshaun Elliott. The blunt hit was delivered at the Miami three-yard line some six yards after Mahomes had secured a first down and might more reasonably have slid. The damage to the helmet punctuated that, but it also was testimony to what really separates him and elevates all around him. That's Patrick Mahomes' man, receiver Marquez Valdez-Scantling said. It shows the ultimate competitor that he is. He would go out there and play with no helmet and no face mask if he had to. Whether numbed or locked in, Mahomes initially didn't even realize anything was amiss. But I got in the huddle and everybody was telling me, he said, smiling. I was like, I got y'all, but I'm not coming out of the game. So you need to figure it out on the sidelines. Mahomes played two more plays before officials noticed. And at least from his perspective, then came the worst part of the deal, the generic backup helmet. We've got to talk about where we store the backup because it was frozen, he said. So when I tried to put it on, it was completely frozen. I couldn't get it on. I don't know if anyone got a picture of it. It didn't look great. But after Harrison Butker's field goal made it 19 to seven, the equipment staff did some adaptive engineering to make it more comfortable. And Mahomes broke that in as he guided a 14 play 72 yard touchdown drive that accounted for the final score. Mahomes' only other run of the night was for 28 yards on a fourth and five. And if it wasn't necessarily as spectacular as the berserk 27-yard touchdown run he had against Tennessee in the AFC Championship game along the way to winning Super Bowl live, it came from the same wellspring that infuses his play and now even has made Mahomes the franchise's career postseason rushing leader with 425 yards. His will to win, Reed said, is ridiculous. Enough so that maybe his decision to keep running and make himself vulnerable on the helmet-breaking play wasn't ideal. Then again, extraordinary times call for extraordinary measures, especially for a team that generally moves the ball well, but too often has sputtered in the red zone. I was trying to get in there. I was trying to get in that end zone, Mahomes said, smiling. A young Pat would have gotten in. I'm getting a little old. The third story is Chiefs defeat Dolphins to advance to the divisional round for a sixth straight season. The Kansas City Chiefs defeated the Miami Dolphins 26 to seven on Saturday night to advance to the divisional round of the playoffs for the sixth straight season. Kansas City found the end zone on its opening possession and never looked back, holding Miami the number two scoring offense in the NFL, scoreless on 10 of its 11 drives. I really would not want to play our defense, said quarterback Patrick Mahomes. It's hard to make a beat on what they're doing, and that's why I knew during training camp that they were special. I was like, man, I'm glad I don't have to play those guys because that would be tough. Indeed, the Chiefs' defense delivered one of its most impressive outings of the season despite frigid temperatures throughout the game. In fact, at four degrees, Saturday's contest marked the fourth coldest kickoff in NFL history. Despite those conditions, however, the Chiefs' defense held Miami's high-powered running game, which averaged 135.8 yards per game during the regular season, to just 76 yards on the ground. I think it's about being locking in with your eyes, keys, alignments, and assignments, said linebacker Nick Bolton. We had faith and trust in our teammates to do their job on the back end so that we could lock in and do ours. 
That cohesion helped the Chiefs hold Miami to a 1-for-12 mark on third down and a season low of only seven points, preserving a lead that Kansas City's offense methodically extended as the game continued behind four field goals from kicker Harrison Butker. Mahomes completed 23 of 41 passing attempts for 262 yards and a touchdown the game, finding rookie wide receiver Rashi Rice for an 11-yard score on the Chiefs' opening drive. It was the sign of things to come for Rice, who caught eight passes for 130 yards while making numerous big plays in critical moments, including a 39-yard catch-and-run that moved the chains on third down and eventually led to a field goal.